Hey, what's up everyone? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, I'm going to give you a quick weekly update on the tank and show you some of the growth going on inside it, as well as take you down to the sump and give you an update on how that's coming along. So let's get to it. So as far as the update on the tank is concerned, we're going to just jump right into it. Um, a few things going on with the tank. The Octo Spawn and this Euphelia corner is really coming along well. Um, the Euphelias have settled into their new positions and are starting to uh, basically fill out, thicken up, and love, basically loving life. Here's the Octo Spawn and the two torches. Torches, I feel, at least in this tank, the torches have always loved to be mid-tank, up in the current, and if I could provide them with some upflow and to really get the tentacles going outwards and upwards, then everything's all good. Frog spawn is really looking nice, as usual. I increased the flow because I um, did a, a cleaning of the the J-Bo, and I'm hoping to have some footage of that. And uh, it increased the flow to the point where this smaller head down here was getting a lot more flow, but the coral responded and got acclimated to the increased flow and it's doing better. The hammer coral is in the process of splitting into a second head. So it's nice to see a little bit of growth out of that coral. Uh, in the middle, the new home for the uh, candy cane, it's really liking it. It's filling out more and getting thicker. The egg cans, since I moved them to the rock, have really responded well. And they're getting thicker and bigger and producing more polyps. So I'll, hopefully that'll fill out that rock pretty well. The, mi the middle of the rock, the uh, Montipora cap is starting to spread. And the red cetoses are branching off, producing more branches, especially this one down here. You can really see how that has started to take off. I'm going to have to move it out of the way of the pink cetosa soon. The green encrusting uh, Monty is doing well. The fungia plate is really doing well. It's filling out and uh, I'm actually seeing some kind of growth out of this. So I'm excited. It's kind of like the new place I put it. Unlike the Duncan Coral, this will, it's really getting to be uh, a real pain. I'll put it in an area, it'll seem to like it, and the longest it has settled is a week, and then it retracts. So that's gonna cause me to go through some research and find out, try and find out what the cause or what the trick is to getting this to come back to where it was when it was full and just a beautiful coral. The Favia is settled in, doing well, and I'm waiting to see growth off of it. The purple candy canes in the back are doing real well. They like their home. Now, the Zoa Garden, I turned it around so that the utter chaos is more towards the sand than up on the return. Reason I did that is as time was going by where it was, I was noticing that the utter chaos was losing some color and vibrancy. So from where it was oh, when I had it over here, <coughs> I put it back to that height and uh, they came right back and colored up. The ones at the top are doing really well. As is pretty much everything, it's starting to spread, fill out more and more. There are some real big polyps, if I can, um, like, like these two are really big. So I'm very happy about the way this, the Zoa Garden is starting to shape up. The Digitata up on the uh, return is really taking off now. This is about, about five to six inches long and 
The fingers coming up are about an inch apiece. But the success story here has been the red digitata. Just leaving it alone and letting it settled in, this is came back and as you can see, the polyp growth on this is outstanding. So it really, really likes where it is. This other piece over here, I think I'm going to have to clip this top piece off because as you can see, the skeleton underneath is basically dead. But I don't want to lose that section, so I may just trim that back. As far as anything else in the tank, um, the cat's paw is doing normal. It's, it's a slow growing coral, so it's kind of frustrating at times. But what in the hobby is, what is it without good news, you got to have a little frustrating news, right? The Hollywood Stunner is, is filling out and really taking off. I let these um, little frags sit on this rock just to see what they would do. And as you can see, the Holly, one section of Hollywood Stunner is really coming out, as well as the two pieces of Purple Digi. Uh, just by laying on the rock, this um, is starting to take off as a new piece, okay? Fish-wise, um, I'm getting a little bit of an aggression issue with the powder blue and the fox face. But I'll let them sort it out and it doesn't seem to be affecting any of the other fish. So all the other fish are doing well. Still fat and happy. I noticed on my onyx clown this morning, if she'll come out, was a little white mark, but it's not any kind of disease i just think she either scraped up against something or somebody bumped her uh, she's not going to cooperate of course because i got the camera near her um, just barely saw it there so now let's move down to the sump and i'll give you an update on the sump itself so the sump is really coming along great as you can see the Grape Calarpa has taken off, as well as the the Chato is kind of all intertwined in it, if you can see it. Uh, so it did take off, not as much as the Grape Calarpa. The Grape Calarpa has been one of the um, algaes that I'll, I'll always have in, the, in my sump, because it really took off and it, and, it, and it produces and thickens up a lot. So it's taking and removing a lot of stuff out of the tank. Uh, the, the sump itself, um, my skimmer is producing gunk, as you can see. It's pulling what it's supposed to pull out. But I am just totally thrilled about the new sump. And I always pay attention to what's going on inside it. I did change over my return pump. And I don't know whether you can see it. Um, let me see if I get some light on it. There we go. I'll put the flashlight on it. The JCOD 9000, it's on setting one, and that's producing a lot of flow in the main tank. Enough for me to uh, just, I'm basically just leaving it there. But the reason I picked this pump is because I wanted something to grow with me. And uh, over time, if I move up to a bigger tank, That'll be my return pump. So uh, that's pretty much the update for this week. And as usual, uh, this is Scott, and I'll see you soon around the reef tank.